Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Hylix. So, uh, last time Gibby came back from the dead, which seems pretty bad, and now there's those weird cord things coming out of the ocean in the afterlife. Okay, so it's still normal here. Was this always here? I don't remember if this was here. I think this looks new. Telenudate. Okay, so I, I do know that spell. Pardon me, I mentioned last episode that it had been a full month since uh, my last recording. In other news, my first playthrough of Hylix, or sorry, my second playthrough of Hylix 1, uh, Hylix still being the only game that I've played through twice on the channel. I believe at least. Barring roguelikes, because I have a show where I play roguelikes. Friday Night Roguelikes. Um, but, you know, in them, you uh, a playthrough is, you know, playing through the game multiple times anyway. But I digress. Um, this staircase makes me wish that I had a controller. I actually do have a controller. My wife got me an excellent controller, but I don't want to break this game, and it's already a little, uh, you know. Okay, so still normal up here. It looked like it got weird downstairs. Or maybe upstairs. Nice. I like to see that. Um, let's go to TV Island. Because I feel like I want to drop off my, my stuff. Ah, oh, I should have gone to the place with the airship. Antennas. Ooh, cool. I forgot that it just increases the power of charge up. That's so interesting. Oh, can I call it from here? No. Damn. It's kind of irritating. There are a few things about this game that I, I think just need a little more time in the oven. Like, I know that just going to the afterlife because you, like, ice yourself or get iced, you know, it should make you wash up on the beach a little death stranding there and that's okay but like i kind of wish that going to like like going to a pool to do it was like a pool i guess it's supposed to be like a punishment for death but like i don't know about that man um where was i let me save here and then go check all right i'm here yeah again like i feel like the fast travel system is the only like issue i have i i feel like it's not like better you know i feel like fast travel is explicitly not better so let's go check out um let's go check out the other new moldal i think which i was it this one I think it was. Dropping out of the sky on it. Fun by me. Uh, this looks different, right? You seal and try. No. Let me talk to you, dude. Oh, God. Another fad to extrude another weapon renders or totally prepares a crafted noise. I know what's happening. 
Rob outside of the mutant worm, thanks to the youthful nerve. I know what's happening. Because of because of Gibby coming back from the dead, he's re-randomized everything. Cause Hylix one has like randomized like speech. Where should we put this on? I guess we can put it on her, right? Cause she's down on her on her flesh. So that'll help buff her back up. But Hylix 1 has, uh, I think the stuff is all, I, I want to say it's either like Mars Volta lyrics, the Mars Volta, I guess, or references to um, like Frank Zappa. But the point is, is that the, a lot of Hylix 1 script was randomized. And in fact, sometimes it would even be randomized within a single playthrough. Songs don't mow my coma, I tell you. Um, so, like, you would... Like, the, the name of the city... Like, I, I remember it as, as Volzeltin, the Lurid City, I think, and Mount Musanorma. But if you talk to an NPC, it'll re-randomize what those names are. Blind spot outside the crowd, down in our circle. Um, and that was always a really interesting thing. And like, like you, you can take it as like an art piece, and I, I think you should. I think you're supposed to. It's meant to be an art thing. But also, it's a statement of you could, you know, perhaps take it as a statement of like. You could take it as a statement of like, hey, you know, RPGs are so liquid that you could just randomize the story, you know? Because classic Dragon, A uh, Dragon Age, Dragon Quest style, like, just generic RPG maker RPGs, or whatever. And so the only way to, to make your RPG different, because everyone has seen some variation of some hero, uh, like... Like, someone, everyone has seen some variation of some plucky young hero, usually with a sword, kill the demon king or the dragon god or something like that. You know, it, it is it, it is now so old that it, it can't even be parodied. Like, every isekai ever made, you know, not everyone, but so many isekais have that same basic plot structure of just, like, there's a big guy and he's called Mao or demon king or devil king or something like that. Like, it is now so ubiquitous that it cannot even be mocked. It is, amidst the extension, the tendency rapidly checks the show. And so the idea of, like, a Moon King being something like that is, you know, similar. But Hylix 1's, and, like, Hylix 1 is, like, you could literally just randomize the terms used and it wouldn't change anything about the story, you know? You still adventure around and you get a boat and then you get an airship and you kill bosses. Surely or partially, tie another creeping glove. Whoa. It's like a vault. That I guess I'm allowed to loot. I wouldn't think any more of this in Hylix 1, possibly. But in Hylix 2, this is like a... like I'm not even like looting like treasure here. I assume this is a bank. I'm in a city. Skull bomb. Cool. But yeah, and, and the thing about Hylix is that it has a pretty boring generic story, and that's the point. Because the way that Hylix 1 shines is in its weird art style and the fact that it's a, a video game made out of clay. It's something so... It's something so digital that still feels so physical, you know? Nice. Because, like... It's clay. You feel like you could pick it up and squash it. You can practically... I think you can even see, like... 
Mason Lindroff's like thumbprints of, of him like squishing into the clay with his hands because he had to make it with his hands. Telescope's telescopic sleeve. Power and speed. Shoot your cuffs. Wait, not that far. Hmm. What do you have on? Power 18, power 17, and speed 60. That's basically a straight upgrade, right? But yeah, Helmsheim cursed this land. Only by dint of royal blood was I spared from transformation. Interesting. And he's using a little bit of the weird language. You know, dint is a, a, an unusual choice of word for that. But, like, it's not impossible or alien. It's just rare. You know, I think dint is a real word. That's so crazy. Let's go look at the Wayne house. Because I feel like Wayne was kind of immune to it. Have I talked about my theory that, like, Wayne and Gibby are brothers? Because Gibby is a, is a moon head, just like Wayne is. And I assume that it's a play on, like, Gibbous Moon. That's, like, the weird... One of the weird... Because everyone knows, like, a, a big old, like, crescent moon. And everyone knows a big half moon. And everyone knows a big full moon. But one of the weird uh, in-between ones is called a gibbous moon, and no one remembers that. This isn't the right place. I totally don't remember where the Wayne house is. This is unfortunate. Oh, yeah, let's also... Maybe the crew can talk to us. The sage's gesture would ensure Lord Gibby's destruction, but it was buried deep in the subterrain. Is that like Legend of Melting? Dig the new hat. Is that from a post dog? Thanks, it is. The ranch attracts a lot of beasts like that. The bicorn was getting stale, so I decided to refresh my image. Oh, yeah, I guess she has a new hat. New haircut? No, it's a seasonally occurring lamellar structure. Lamellar? That's that's really interesting. <laughs> that's funny. I like that a lot. That like legitimately amuses me. Seasonally occurring lamellar structure. <laughs> Yeah, I can only assume that like he's not a he's not a human, so he has a weird species that like just grows shit. So yeah, I assume that like Gibby was I assume that like Gibby was like you know, royalty, of course. But that's VUX's edifice, right? And that Wayne was like two, like he was a bastard prince or something. But now looking at it, like I would, uh, I would think that. Oh god. But yeah, now looking at it, I would think that like. That Wayne is a typical member of the species, and that Gibby is a weird bastard offshoot. A heart is ours, regrettably. Still against that pretty apparel with the blind dome. So they morph their day near an operational fort. Extrude an animal, don't recognize your road.
Hearing my noise, my animal greatly tethers its skill. Oh, so this is the Wayne house. This is just what they look like now. That's messed up, man. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but it finally snowed here. But yeah, one of my assumptions about, like... Because I assume that Wayne was, like, kind of a, a lazy, like, layabout. Which another overchemical. I assume that Wayne was like um a weird like bastard like offshoot. Uh because he's lazy. Um there's a couple things about th I I've I've kind of been meaning to make a video about this on and off, but like it's so weird that like I I I don't even know where to begin. Um, but like, there, there's a couple things that to me s indicates that like Slum Snona and and Wayne are kind of like lazy. Like they're just you know both kind of layabouts. Um, but one of them is that like you get Wayne's, you get what is described as Wayne's life savings, and it's like fifty bucks, and a random enemy has more than that on him in his pocket. You know? Hey, I'm back in New Moldol. I'm using a guide and a walkthrough um, because I don't want to miss things. I don't want to miss too much. And, like, I saw a whole huge section that isn't, like, the Gib Fort or whatever it's called. Highlands Island. Gib Fort. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to come back here to make sure that I didn't miss it. Uh, and I think they even mentioned needing a skull bomb before. But suffice it to say, I read that you can use the skull bomb to do something down here. So another thing that I wanted to mention, there's a little, like, there's like a weird, like, schmear on some of the, um... Uh, like, sprites used in Hylix 1. And I feel like, uh, that is intentionally used here to make it feel a little more classic. Which I like, I think that's cool. Sorry, I only skimmed it because I don't actually know where I'm supposed to be going. Partially melt a fort atop the decorated... Yeah, sure. Is it here? Oh, that's weird. Aren't you a shop? <laughs> I'll get some more of these, honestly. That's so weird that, like, the shopkeeper wandered away. Oh, also, there were a lot of guys in Hylix 2 that were, like, just, like, legs. Sorry, I've done this. Uh, they were, like, legs with, um, with weird shit on their heads. Like, I think the, the spiral polycerate is, is where I started to really notice that, where it was just, like, it was just a guy with a bunch of shit on his torso, and it made him look really weird but he had normal legs. And I think it's because a lot of the stuff in Hylix 1 was actually like action figures or I have this. It's technically used as like a, a drawing tool. His hand is fallen off because uh, he's modular, but don't mind that. Banana, cool. I know I saw something down here. Whatever. I 
Okay, and we're back here. And I think this just spits us out to here. Yes, it does. So what am I missing down here? Very strange. Hallowed cave is against the gaseous worm. Field tries a doubt amidst the vessel. A lot of vessel. Hearing a lot of vessel talk. I'll hang with the drill for its tendency. So where do I put this thing? This is the problem with being a Let's Player because like, sometimes you, you will find out that there is something there. And like sometimes it's just like someone's like, oh hey, there's a thing. You don't want to miss this. And you're you know, you're right. He's right, I don't. But like I don't wanna I don't wanna like get like real spoiled. So I end up just getting lost. Whoops. Uh, I totally forgot where I was even supposed to be using the skull bomb. It's not in New Multal. It's on the same island as it, but it's not in the city proper. I thought it was in that little dun like little tunnel down there. Whoops. Whatever. Um, another thing about doing LPs that is like. I feel is maybe just specific to me is that like I want to I do want to include like screw up time essentially um because I want to have like a I want to I want to be able to get my ideas across I want to be able to discuss things let me scooch that pardon long loading screen oh man I slept like five hours last night but I was like I gotta record oh god I just, I need to make sure. I'm pretty sure I got this one. Yeah, nematode. Kind of thought so. Do you think it would be weird for me to play um, Hylex 1 a third time? <laughs> The way that the NPCs move kind of make it... <clears throat> goodness gracious, pardon me. Kind of make it difficult to talk to them sometimes. You brought Skull Bomb? Grant has the Skull Bomb that it may be completed. I guess it's okay. Toss it in. <laughs> I like that animation. I do like that animation a lot. That's good. I like it. I like this. I like how you can see the sky back there. It looks uh, uh, very similar to how it looked in Hylix One. Could not have done it. You should be the first to witness what lies beneath us. Oh, there's a little rope tied off. Okay, let's head on in then. Man, based on what I'm seeing, this is the longest first playthrough of Hylix One. Although primarily just because the time does. What the hell? So back in the day, I think even before my time, a lot of RPGs were first person like this. Like, I want to say that Ultima is. Charge up, huh? Wow, Pongorma's going first. Nice. Nice. 
Oh, it's now doing other stuff to me as well. Interesting. Cool. Quaved Stalker. I think you should go. That's some good damage. I've got to say. Let's see about Wave Artifice then, huh? Nice. Not bad. Not terrible. But yeah, like way, way back in the day, there were some RPGs that were just, they looked like this. Um, I think Ultimate is, um, and obviously stuff like the Elder Scrolls ended up being like this as well. Ugh. But yeah, the almost like tank controls where you're always doing like 90, 90 degree turns and moving forwards or backwards one step at a time is, uh, I feel like that's a very like classic style RPG movement. to me again why not very very useful that the um the healing does give you a, a defense status as well that actually kind of makes me think that I should have done it to someone else but that's okay but yeah this is now like because we, we've had like dungeon crawling stuff We've had, like, fairly normal uh, RPG shenanigans. But in that other maze, uh... Yes, Mason? Cool. Okay, that's where I came from. That's a pit. That's weird. This this is really uh, letting the... Um, I feel like the stuff is changing around me as I move. That's really weird and cool. Okay. This really is is letting the the use of 3D shine. I th I feel. Okay. Well, we can come back here at least. That's cool. Oh, we filled back up. That's also useful. Four slices. Also, that thing is called nonconformist. Interesting. Oh, hey, it's more Dracula's. Okay. Uh, cool. 
Let's just get everyone going, right? Such a good animation. And again, like the other area, it looks like we're like getting more juice every like pass through, which I like. Shatter. You gotta go next. Perfect. And then I think we can just melee this guy down, right? Actually, we're getting we're getting more juice every time we go through. We may as well just do this. But yeah, honestly, I would probably like love a uh, a map, you know? Because like the way that uh, the way that the the mazes makes it very very hard to navigate and see where I'm going. Baited poncho, cool. Oh, don't. You you can't do this to me. This is so complicated. Should I just do this off camera? I think I'm going to do this off camera. I'll I'll play a little more because I usually do 30 or 40 minute episodes, but like I think I should play this off camera. Oh, that's the pit trap from upstairs. Oh, that's interesting. If you hold the sprint button, you can, you can like strafe. You can also move faster. Now, what are you things? Courtier, Quiffstalker, Bombalog. I think I recognize all of those. This is this is weird and interesting. Um. This is uh, an RPG that maybe people haven't played in a couple of years, but uh, little known indie classic, uh, Persona 5 uh, has a, you know, obviously it has its big storyline dungeons, but then also in it is a bunch of like a, a randomly generated uh, like roguelike dungeon that you can go into at Loosely any time, you know, not actually any time, but pretty much most of the time you can go in there. Wow. We're like hitting triple digits on that. That's so great. That's so good. I love that. And now that charge up is getting like so powerful, I feel like it's probably like definitely better to use it. Sorry, I was I was thinking about something else. Um, but yeah, in Persona Five, there's a, a there's a roguelike dungeon that's randomly generated that you can go through. In addition to, in addition to the rest of the things. Um. And it was it was kind of interesting because Persona uh, Four consists of like randomly generated regular dungeons. I think Persona One is regular dungeons, and Persona Three is almost all big roguelike. Um, tube steak manifold. Uh, and it was just kind of interesting that um. Persona 5 goes for having both. Which is like what you want. That's the most value, you know? Nice. 
Getting in there. But anyway, that's what this reminds me of. Um, I feel like it. Th this is almost like a super dungeon where like you can go through it. You definitely don't need to to beat the game. You'll get a lot of good stuff for it though. And maybe you should go through it. But like you don't need to at all. In, in no way, shape, or form should you maybe. Oh god, his health filled all the way back up. Let's crisp him. I should have crisped the other one just to get the flame off on him. God, I need to go have like breakfast soon. I'm getting hungry. I'll finish this fight and I'll probably cut the episode. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll do this off screen, right? Cause like this is this is cool, definitely, but like I feel like this is gonna fights in this game take a take a pretty long time sometimes. And so maybe it might be better to to save this for you know my own time just to not bog everything down. Cause like now we're out of juice and I don't want to use items because this is essentially like an item hole. Yeah, this is uh this is weird. This is different. Like we already had weird uh gameplay stuff with the um the fact that you can go play a a platformer. <laughs> That's terrifying. And another down here. Yeah, we already Oh, and then it goes back up. Yeah, with the fact that you can play a platformer, we already had enough, like, weird changes of, um, oh, interesting, of gameplay. Oh, this is where I was. Okay, so I, th I, it's kind of a problem how like weird and samey everything looks. Like at least if everything was a bunch of different weird colors, then I could like. Whoops. What the hell? <laughs> but yeah, like. Th this is a cool, interesting new gameplay idea, but I do think that I'm going to do this on my own time. Uh, the Koi is interesting. What is this called? Carassius. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to do this on my own time. I'll just recap what I, uh, what I did in it. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys next time. I've now heard this has been Hylix 2. Um, have a good day, everyone. Bye.